Hi, and welcome to this new video in this series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video, we'll be covering the topic of advertisements in BLE. We'll take a look at what advertisements in Bluetooth means. We'll talk about the different types of advertisements, the different parameters, such as the advertising interval, and then we'll talk about the data that's sent in the advertisement packets. And finally, we'll cover some of the new features that were introduced in Bluetooth 5 that are related to Bluetooth advertisements. So what are advertisements? Well, basically advertisements are the packets that are sent out by a broadcaster or a device that wants to be discovered and then possibly connected to. Now, they are sent out on the three primary advertising channels, which are 37, 38, and 39, and possibly only a subset of them, and then repeats at a fixed interval and for a period of time. Advertisement packets have different types. They can be either connectable or non-connectable, scannable or non-scannable, or scannable, what it means is that a device can send a request for additional data from the advertiser in what's called a scan request. And that advertiser responds with a scan response, which includes the additional advertisement data being sent. Other types of advertisements include being directed versus undirected. What directed means is that an advertising device can target a specific device that it wants to be connected to or that it wants to send its advertisement data to. The most important parameter related to advertisements is the advertising interval. This value defines how often a device sends out advertising packets. And during this interval, the device will send out one advertising packet on each of the primary advertising channels or on a subset of these channels. But the value of the advertising interval ranges between 20 milliseconds and 10.24 seconds in small increments of 625 microseconds. Now keep in mind that this value greatly impacts battery life and must be chosen very carefully. So it's recommended to choose the longest advertising interval that can still satisfy an acceptable user experience while achieving the lowest power consumption for your device. So an advertising packet can contain many types of information, but most commonly it'll include the following. A device name, which makes it more user-friendly during discovery, the transmit power value, which along with the RSSI will allow the discoverer to approximate the range of the device, and the UIDs for the services that this advertising device supports. Sometimes the 31 bytes of maximum advertisement data capacity is not enough to send out the necessary data. In this case, we can use what's called a scan request scan response. Think of it as additional advertisement data that can be sent out by the advertising device, but only on request from the device doing the discovery. Now let's take a look at a capture using the LSS Bluetooth tracker. After we hit the record button to start capturing the data, we start to see the different advertisements being sent by the devices in the area. For example, here we have a few devices, one of them called uh, Playbulb Candle, another one called My iPhone, and a few others that don't have uh, strings attached to their name. This gives us a good overview of the different advertisements. And if we want to drill down even more, into more detail, we can expand any of these advertisements. For example, let's take a look at the Playbill Candle advertisement. And if we expand that, let's take a look at the Scan Request Packet. Over here in the right, if we switch to the Details view, we can see a lot more information about this specific packet. For example, we can see the RSSI being minus 63.5 dBm in this case, we can see the advertisement channel that was being used for sending this advertisement. In this case, it was 38 and a lot more information. And down here, you can, act, you can see the packet raw data as well. Now to get a better visual view, you can switch to the instant PicoNet view. Here we can see the different interactions between the devices. For example, we have a device that's called my iPhone that is receiving advertisements from these devices in the, other, in the area. Now, the one nice thing here is that the lines drawn between the devices indicate the type of interaction between them. So here we have a dashed line, which means the iPhone is sending scan requests to the devices it is receiving the advertisements from. In the case of a data transfer between devices that are connected to each other, it will show a solid line with arrows pointing in the direction of the data transfer, along with the speed of the transfer as well. 
This view also shows you the RSSI of the devices being discovered, which gives us a good idea of the distance between the tracker and these devices. Bluetooth 5 introduced a feature that allows advertising devices to broadcast much more data than previous versions of Bluetooth, up to eight times the capacity. This new feature is called Advertising Extensions, or Extended Advertisements. Now in earlier versions, the advertisement data was capped at 31 bytes, but now with the new Extended Advertisements, the capacity is increased to up to 255 bytes. The way that advertising extensions work is by the device sending out the primary advertisements, which then contain information on how to locate, in time and frequency, the secondary advertisements, which are called extended advertisements. Now these extended advertisements are sent out on the secondary advertisement channels we mentioned earlier, which are the same as the data channels used during a connection. Another new feature introduced in Bluetooth 5 is the periodic advertising mode. Now, periodic advertisements are simply extended advertisements, but are sent out continuously at a fixed interval. For example, think of a use case where we have a sensor device that's gathering data, and we have other multiple scanner devices that need to continuously monitor the sensor device. In this use case, we can use the periodic advertisements to continuously send out the temperature data that could be changing over time, to these multiple scanner devices without having to form a connection between them. In the upcoming video, we'll talk about connections in BLE. We'll look at how devices connect to each other, how they manage the connection afterwards, we'll talk about the different connection parameters, as well as the different ways in which they exchange data. To learn more about Elisys, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elisys.com. Have a need for training or consulting services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.